All right. Welcome, 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 everyone, to this special edition of Generally Irritable. I want to, we're going to wait just a minute before we get started. Somebody in the chat, do me a favor and let me know that you can hear us well and that, uh, and that there's no echo or anything. Okay, we got to see. This is what I was told. You got to wait a minute. See, Benjamin told me not to start the episodes right away uh -huh. because he said I need to wait until people get on and start watching before I start getting into the meat of it. So, right. um, so yes, if you are here with us this evening, just give me a quick shout out in the in the comments and let me know that you can hear us okay and that the sound is good. Um, I'm super excited to have my guest here with me this evening uh, instead of online. And so I'm a little bit nervous about the um, the audio being OK. So just yeah. make sure you can hear us good um, and that we're cool. Sound is fine. OK, thank you, Sherry Lynn. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. OK, so you guys know normally the show is on Sunday evenings at seven and you might be thinking to yourself, self. Why is Erica coming to me randomly on a Thursday evening? Well, there's a reason. And it's because Channel 17, our local news channel, uh, actually carries my program. And they have a cutoff for political programming. So tomorrow, um, except for their debates that they're hosting, you can't post any new political content related to the ballots or the candidates, uh, which, you know, I don't want to hate on them. So this isn't a hate. This is just a suggestion. Jordan, you put this in the, in the suggestion box um, that maybe it should be allowed a little bit later, right? So that we have like at least a couple of weeks into February to really wrap our heads around these ballot items, to really get to know our candidates and to get that information out there. So totally, totally glad you take my stuff. Just wish that you took it a little bit longer. So I wanted to get some time in this evening with Christopher Aaron Felker, who is running for War 3 City Council. Hey! Um, he told me to be serious. I was supposed to be serious, and I'm already being goofy. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Chairman um, of the Republican Party also. Oh, yes. Okay, so Christopher Aaron Felker, City Council candidate, GOP, Burlington GOP chair, and communications chair for the county oh yeah that's true am i forgetting anything else no i mean there's a lot i'm a good cook too oh i'm a good cook too but really i don't put it on the resume wait isn't your just for my friends isn't your husband a cook yes is. isn't he a chef yes he is so you, a chef married a chef well he's a professional chef and i'm a home chef so do you cook for him does he like oh cook God. for everybody all day? And so then he, come he, home, he, he comes cooks home? for everybody all day and then he comes home. And just like every professional chef who cooks up for work, they don't wash dishes at home. <laughs> they have a staff and a dishwasher at work who do their dishes for them. And so at home, I don't ask my husband to cook me dinner because I don't want to wash his dishes because <laughs> he uses as, as many pots and pans as you would if you worked in a professional kitchen. And when you cook at home, you cook differently. You, yeah. You try not to make a huge mess. Yep. Um, so I try not to make a huge mess. And as such, I'm like, don't worry, honey, you rest. I will make dinner. <laughs> I feel like this is a very similar argument to Benjamin and I. So we have a deal that I do the grocery shopping and the cooking because he won't. He just won't. He will cook himself a steak and then get a bag of salad. Like that is the extent, you know, and put some rice in the rice cooker. So I'm like, okay, I'll cook and I'll do the grocery shopping and everything. You just have to do the dishes. And he literally every night, even when I try to reuse dishes, he still says, why did you have to use every dish in the house? Oh, there you go. And I do you know the type, you know, the type <laughs> uh, This is the married life. Hashtag married life. Yeah. Um, thank you, Sherry Lynn. She says we look amazing. Oh, thank you, Sherry. You're the best. Do I look dewy? I'm a little bit hot. No, you I'm look great. Hot. I'm sweating. A little no bit. need to blot. Who? Anyway, speaking of hot city council race this year, I'm pretty yeah. excited about. Um, so let's 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 dive into it a little bit it's gonna it, be a big shakeup this year it, you think so well of course we've got max tracy leaving um jane oh, stromberg yes. leaving oh wait they're up for re-election this year all oh. the ward seats are up for re-election this year that means wards one through eight 
the what? only seats that are open next year are the district seats and that's only if we keep districts after our uh, citywide oh, redistricting. Yeah. So, up. yep, the um the so currently we running? employ currently we employ an eight ward and four district oh. model and the four district model was just nobody cool. really cool. likes it. They considered it a flawed experiment or okay. a failed experiment. Okay. Um there it was essentially like small little at large war um double wards squeezed mm -hmm. together. Okay. And uh people all throughout the city really just didn't care for that type of representation. They mm. felt they had one and a half counselors and yes. not two. Correct. And so we found when during redistricting committee meetings and the hearings that they held, the public mm -hmm. forum hearings, that many people all throughout the city really do want to go back to a two counselor per ward system. Um, and I, I think that's a great idea, to be quite frank. I, I do. I, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. Um, people complain, well, council will be less likely to get things done. That's a hopefully, good thing. Hopefully. That's a good thing. Please hopefully. stop doing what you're, you're doing. You're doing way too much. You know, I've got Coolidge quotes that say it's better to kill bad bills than to get good ones passed. That so is come true. on now. Let's let's get some more people in here and let's have a real conversation. Well, you know, Calvin Coolidge is my favorite president. He is. He's the yeah. only one that the national debt did not grow under. Okay. Yep. The okay. Only one. Only one. Only one. Um, and, uh, he happens to be from Vermont. Oh yeah. He is a big Vermonter. So I try to use the quotes when I can. I like it. I'm into it. Yeah. Uh, wait, Perry Freeman is leaving too? Uh, no, Perry Freeman's the central district city councilor. She's up for re-election next year, but, um, undetermined oh. whether or not she'll run. Okay. Sherry thought, oh, so Sherry thought Perry was going to be. So yeah, next Max year. is leaving and not running again. And Jane Stromberg is leaving and not running again. Chip Mason is leaving and not running again. Wow. Um, and so we have a lot of contested Good. races and two out of the eight ward races are uncontested. That's going to be Councillor Carpenter in Ward 4 yep. and uh, incumbent Karen Paul down in Ward 6. I should have ran for city council instead of school board. No. Ugh, You're no, an excellent I know. candidate for school board. I know. I just, I want to, I wish people would run for stuff. I, You know what? I really don't want to run for all of it. Let's be real. I, like most people, would like to have my simple, fun life you know, oh, yeah. people see my yeah. pictures and they're like, what are you doing, Erica? And, you know, I've been really fortunate. Uh, my husband has a really a fun job, a great career, and we are, are able to travel for his work and um, to, you know, he's a filmmaker. And so we get to really explore and have a lot of fun. We get to go to film festivals and dress up in ridiculous costumes. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's right. So why would I want to go sit in city council committee and, and meetings and, and school board meetings when I can just go have a fun life? Well, you told me you wanted to be more anchored to Vermont, to be around family and to put down roots and actually get involved in town. And so this is the great, greatest way to do that. Well, and that's what I just wish more people were into self-governance like me. We're going to we're going to keep talking about that in the GOP. How do we get people activated? How do we get them connected and plugged in? To, to run for those school board seats, to sit yeah. in those commissions. Well, doing this is a big part of that because yeah. um, what we've been doing is going out and making sure that we're connecting in our neighborhoods and and we have been building this party and that's yep. how we grow in the next generation to, to run. Yep. And, get, and build that bench. And help educate our neighbors about why it's so important to, to be paying attention and to not just assume that uh, you know, people are doing their job. Right. And it's important to the whole process that all political parties are represented. When we are left with a battle and a struggle between just Democrats and progressives, that leaves a whole swath of independently minded people and conservatives and libertarians all out in the cold. So if not you, then who? We this have to I'm be saying. part of the conversation. It's important to the whole process of democracy. This is I, I love that you said that we it's it really is that we all need to participate. And I think there are so many people who are disaffected uh, residents who feel like who represents me? You know, they don't think of themselves as Republicans like we do. Right. And, mm -hmm. and they, they just think of themselves as centrists or moderates or independents or, mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And. And so they don't know really, well, what does a Republican mean? What does a Democrat mean? And and more to the point, how are they represented and how do they show up in my local government, in local city government, 
county government, state government, you know, you may not think of yourself as a Republican, but if you think of yourself as fiscally responsible, if you think the taxes are too high, uh, if you're, what is, what was that guy? If the rent is too damn high party oh, yeah. in New York city, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm in the rent is too damn high party and I'm a landlord. Okay. I do not want to have to charge as much as I do, but we're, I'm sorry. You know what, Christopher, we're yeah. digressing and talking about politics in general. And what we really should be doing is focusing on your campaign for city council. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, well, I'll go on a total tangent and that's fine. I'll keep start talking. pontificating about everything. So, okay. So the big thing I want to get to focus on tonight um, is, oh, Sherry says um, she thought for sure Perry said she won't be running. Maybe she said she doesn't think she'll be running next year. Um, I do know a bunch of them said that they felt like um, or Max Tracy specifically said he didn't feel like they got compensated enough for the amount of work um, that city council is. And to me, my answer is correct, because y'all are doing too much, which we covered a little earlier. We covered that a little bit earlier. Yeah. But you know what? I was actually in the, um, the com uh, sorry, the charter change committee meetings when they were discussing putting forward a charter change to increase oh, their yeah. pay their butt, yeah. and I was floored by some of the things that they were putting out there truly doubling their base pay wanting and you know I walked in there in in the mood to compromise in the in the spirit of unity I was willing to offer some concessions and some um some movement yeah you know i feel that and we did we because did, we want to honor the people we who want serve. we want to tear down barriers to service which was what the resolution that mm. they tried to manipulate into their own pay raise but you know the truth is if we came up with the idea that yes if you are a parent who has young children and needs uh child care um, when city council meetings go on, maybe we could figure out a way to provide childcare during these meetings mm. for you so that we uh, don't have yeah, to worry about that. that. Would be you cool. know what? Let's get single mothers okay. involved if they want to be, sure. you know? And um, we talked about healthcare. They wanted to be put on the city healthcare plan. And I said, whoa, let's pump the brakes on that. How about if you maybe potentially get a small stipend to put towards your healthcare, and then you go on Vermont Health Connect and get healthcare just like the rest of the people in Vermont have to. There's no reason why you should be on the city healthcare plan when you're not a city employee. Well, and I, 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 I had this complaint recently where I said, you know, I'm just a little bit disturbed that the people who who work at City Hall and other places make more than the average Vermonter. This idea that they tax the people that they work for so that they can make more than the people paying their salaries is very strange to me. Um, and, oh, it was in my conversation uh, with, with Alex Stith, actually. Um, and he said, well, you know, we want to keep people who are talented and competent and all that. And I said, yes. However, those people can make more money in the private sector. And if they and if they would like to, they should go to the private sector. Um, yes, we want to keep people who are talented and competent and all of those things. But do we do it at the cost of affordability? Do we right. do we do? That's it the whole key. I'm totally fine with compensating people appropriately that are city employees. Right. I would prefer if we can tighten our belts a little bit more and trim some of our bloated government bureaucracy and hopefully save millions of dollars. Well, and wasn't it so there was uh, some of the cares. Sorry about that. Oh, um, tough finding. Brian says tough finding reasonably priced apartments in Burlington. Thus, it's tough going up there. Um, however, did check out the ward openings the other night. They are considerable. That's do, have have we'll talk about it offline. I'm really curious about who's running for oh, all the seats. other candidates. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that. Offline. That is very. Curious. But you're right, Brian. It is difficult to find reasonably priced apartments in Burlington. It's even difficult to find a market rate apartment in Burlington. Truly, um, I'm a renter. I've been a renter now in Burlington for nine years. Um, our building turns over June 1st and we have to renew, we get offered to renew our leases by the end of October or early November. We are re-signing for the next early? year. Yes. They lock in early and well, yeah, 
because it's a, we have less than 1% vacancy rate in this city. We are in a housing crisis. And not only do we have a less than 1% vacancy rate, but our housing market is upside down. Most cities have 60% homeowners, 40% renters. We are 60% renters, 40% homeowners. Mm. So oh, there is a, a severe deficiency in supply and a high, high demand for housing. And that is basic economics as to why our market rate has skyrocketed up and almost doubled in the last 10 years oh, sorry. or 15 years. So, so what do you think about now, okay, so let me back up. So you tell tell our tell my our viewers, my viewers, our viewers this evening. Tell them what your three priorities are uh, for the campaign. Like, what's your campaign pitch? Sure. So we're continuing to um, to campaign on a positive policing policy for the city of Burlington. Okay. Uh, that includes, it's adding to the police department in three folds. The first is adding more officers. Okay. We raised the officer cap, but we need to get them hired now. We need to get them oh, on board. Yes. It's okay. adding funding so that way our officers are properly trained and properly equipped. And it's adding more social workers and mental health workers to take the burden off of the um, uniformed officers from having to engage in um, policing that they don't need to be engaging in. Yeah. It could be handled by other people. Okay. And it absolutely should, because we have had a rise in crime. While the statistics are often muddied, the truth is in the last year, we've seen a rise in priority one calls. Those are the ones that you really need the cops to show up for, folks. What is, what is prior, you know what, hold on. I'm going to make our- You should I'm pull up the make, BPD website. You, would you yeah. do that? Hey, you guys, I'm going to just, I'm going to make our frame a little bit wider so we don't have to like be sure. on top of each other. Not that, I mean, you smell good and Thank you're very, you. very handsome. Oh, but... you're too kind. <laughs> I get it. Nope, that's their Twitter account. No. Nope. Okay. Okay. But oh, y'all go to the city website. Yeah. So, uh, so priority one calls uh, have been higher than before, and these are the ones that we need. Um, here, I'll move this over here. Yeah. I mean, because uh, with the um, with the cuts to the police department here, I'm going to scoot you over like this. The chief had to roll out a system where they prioritized all calls that were coming in in levels of um, severity and necessity oh, for officers so, to get there to, so, to be able to dole out resources appropriately since they're now rationed due to the that's... drastic cuts in the Burlington Police Department. OK, so basically priority one is like somebody's getting hit bleeding. Yep. It's bad. an emergency. That means it's, it's an really, absolute really bad, emergency. I would imagine. And then there's, so you said there's five levels. Okay. There's uh, three. Three levels. All right. Do you know? Thanks. Let's see. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We don't need to get that deep into it. I, I was sometimes just, I'm like Scotty. Oh, and... priority response. Yeah, there we go. go. Okay. I'm Here. Like, yeah. Let me, let me do this and then you can. Take it back. Oh, nope. Stop using the Oh, mouse. sorry. <laughs> I'm like, We're why is both it not... trying to use the mouse. <laughs> Hold on one second. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. How come this isn't working? All right, you guys. We're having some technical difficulties. Do, 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 do. Okay. Come on. It does this occasionally. I need my man Travis Jones to do an update on my computer. Anybody listening, uh, especially if y'all are in the New North End, Travis Jones is one of our neighbors, and he's an IT tech guru guy, and he fixes my computers, and he's awesome, and he's delightful. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to share the screen. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so priority response. Okay, now you can. Yeah, let's click okay. on priority response, and it'll it should show you the chart okay here we go so oh wow priority ones are the dark blues okay light blues are uh priority two and white are uh priority three so mm. we're talking 911 hang up you have to investigate that because you have no idea how severe that could be oh, could for be real arson aggravated assault simple assault uh bomb threats 
uh, <laughs> crash with fatalities, crash with an injured person, okay. cruelty to a child, domestic DUI, assault, felonies, overdose. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So these are emergencies. Some yeah, could matter of life and death in a yeah. lot of places. Robberies, also larcenies. Um, okay. Missing persons. So, so these are ones that we really need actual police officers to show up to, not just, uh, not just social workers. Right. 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 Okay. And so, but there are, and we also need, sometimes we do need social workers to show up like per, for here, uh, cruelty to a child. You're oh, going to need to have social workers available yeah. for that sexual assaults. You'll need to have somebody stalking. Oh, yep. Um, Suicide and even attempted. missing person. Yeah. You need to have teams of, you need to have a lot of resources to handle the problems and not just crime that takes place in our city. So do you think there's anybody who's actually arguing that, like, as an example, do you think there's anybody arguing that we don't need more social workers and we don't need more like a balance of mental health things? Is there anybody actually arguing against that? No, I haven't heard anybody argue no. against that. I think I think everyone agrees to that some one degree or another. Everybody's kind of on board with this plan that and, it has to make sense. Right. And so but at the same time, we have to make sure that social workers or different kinds of response people are protected and safe when they show up. Right. Yes. Like, yes. We're not just going to send a social worker who has no ability to protect themselves show up to a, a possible kidnapping. Right. Right. We also need, can't just cut their, the police department budget and reallocate those funds elsewhere because the police department needs to be properly and well trained at the same time. Yep. Yeah. Well, so and, you can't just walk in there with a cleaver. This has to be, we have, if you're going in there to tweak, you have to make sure that you're balancing the equation like an algebra. You know, you can't just take off of one side otherwise. Right. Well, I think um, Alec and I were talking about this the other night and we said, you can't, you, you never want to cut off one process to implement the new one, you have to run them concurrently, mm -hmm. you know, so for a little while, the budget really should have gone way up, right, so that we could start recruiting and hiring these social work type people, and doing these other kinds of trainings with the police officers and running the programs concurrently, or right. at the same time, we need to have a plan in place, and meaning in place and active, before we could actually start making any kind of augmentation to the officer level but that's not what burlington city council did last year yeah they decided to cut by 30 percent. they had a problem with just three officers out of a hundred now but yet they cut the police department 30 percent by attrition and they act surprised oh this is an unintended consequence we we weren't expecting officers to leave this quickly why weren't you we stood here and warned you that it was happening that yeah. it's going to happen you we're were... not psychic we... come on we're not psychics we knew, just knew this was going to happen because this is why this is how people respond when you treat them like the garbage that you treated them well and it makes me wonder you know some of our city councilors have mentioned that people are not necessarily kind or polite to them or understand or appreciate the value that they bring to the city and all that they do and I, so it's interesting to me that they actually treat their employees the same way that they don't want to be treated. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's too bad. It is too bad. It's a real shame. We we want to work on rebuilding the connections between uh, the police department and the neighborhoods. And the only way you do that is by having enough officers to get them out of the cars and start beginning foot patrols again. We need to build relationships by having officers that are regularly stationed in our neighborhoods that walk around that get to know us to go back to community policing yep thank you that's yeah. how we rebuild and that's how we will create the best public safety team in this state well the I, exemplar for police departments it really and we we really already had that in in burlington police department and in a lot of ways our the sro program um, you know, I heard story after story of young people who were who felt saved by their relationship with their SRO, that they were in trouble or they were a troubled kid. And and, you know, they got in trouble and this and their school resource officer um, took an interest in them and actually showed up and cared. Um, you know, other stories of kids who felt safer with the school resource officer mm -hmm. there because you know, people don't want to talk about it or admit it, but there is crime and other stuff happening in our schools, protect, yeah. particularly BHS. And not to be really dark, but we've seen crises happen all around this country when it comes to tragedies taking place in schools. In the having state of Vermont. Officer, 
having an officer on the premises uh, re will greatly reduce any response time to anything that happens. So having resource officers there is to me common sense. In addition to hardening the buildings so that way, since kids have ID cards, we need to make it so that way those doors can lock and we can trap any intruder in any corridor before they can actually run freely through a school. Yep, and, we, and we've seen examples of that. We won't get into it tonight, but there's example after example. We had a school shooter in Vermont. Um, there has been other planned. things planned school shooter. Thank you. Uh, and so and and it was school resource officers and the student relationship with those SROs that that thwarted the uh, would be shooter. And um, so I just think that that is so important. Um, and I and I love our Burlington Police Department. I love yeah, how hard fantastic. they work. Uh, Chief Murad uh, is is an awesome dude. Uh, you know, no, we don't always agree, yep. we, you know, we don't always agree on everything, but he is a good man that cares. He is a kind, caring man who genuinely listens and he is well educated. He's well trained. He's patient and he's kind. And he's truly overqualified for the position here in Burlington. <laughs> and we are great. He wants to stay here because he's originally from Bur yeah. from Vermont yep. and I don't blame him. Like it's beautiful here. And he wants to. He wants to serve. Yeah. And and I want him to serve. I think that he's fantastic. I think everybody does. I'm I hope maybe with a new city council, uh, we'll be able to make some different decisions. Well, we'll see. The mayor just nom just formally nominated Chief Murad earlier this afternoon, and the vote on council, the progressive party which is a six no. members out of the 12 member body, they've already released a statement in a unified no. Yep. And so clearly the mayor doesn't have the votes to advance Chief Murad's nomination at this point. So For hopefully now. he'll just continue serving in an acting capacity. And then a new city council come March can actually get Murad, Chief Murad. You guys know confirmed. how we can get Chief Murad confirmed? Vote for this guy. Yep. Vote for this guy. Because that that is one of the progressive... Uh, council members is in your district. Absolutely. Um, I'm challenging one of those six progressive city councilors. Uh, Who's vehemently anti-police. He is. Recall. Yes, he is an abolition. He wants to abolish the police. Oh, oh. He in no un abs absolutely those terms. He wants to abolish the police. I envision a future without police. Came right out of his mouth, and my jaw dropped to the ground. I so fascinating. Oh, it's just an example of his immaturity. He's just a young, idealistic mm -hmm. man who doesn't understand the unintended consequences of his yeah. ignorance. Well, and it's, you know, it's, it's, I, I love the, um, the want for people. Like, I admire that there's a belief that we might get to a place or that we could get to a place. Um, but I've been the victim of enough crimes and the perpetrator of enough crimes, um, which I've been open about on this channel. And I'm grateful I got arrested. I'm grateful I got in trouble because it got me out of the life that I had gotten into. And so just like, I, I do not want their version of mercy. Right. Uh, well, I do beauty, not want it. The beauty of Chief Murad is the fact that he is not, he is a very progressive or forward leaning, forward thinking police officer. He is not opposed to advancing and, and augmenting policing to best suit the city of Burlington. He's just not the cherry picked ideal uh, candidate for the progressive party. That doesn't make him a bad candidate. He is an exemplary leader. Yeah. And the rank and file police department, they absolutely love support him. him. They love him. It is important. They appreciate him. They feel supported by him. Okay. This didn't, this wasn't meant to turn into a raw, raw chief. you right. Yeah. Right. But, uh, but so, okay. So policing so is a big one. What right. did you, how did you say it? What was the uh, community friendly policing or how did you say it? Your, oh, your community policing, community policing. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get to that. Um, let's see. Uh, people can. Oh, so Sherry Lynn said Joe is on the record saying he had a vision of Burlington with no police. They can find it in one of the debates from last year. Yeah, that is yeah. true. Right there in the debate. That is true. You and can then, also see my jaw drop when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Brian said Burlington could staff a crisis response team. Those are good tax dollars. Agreed. Yeah. Um, agreed. We do have the IRV, the emergency Emerg response vehicle, but we just need to make sure we have the officers to staff it because currently our officers are down to like 63. And I think that we've got more leaving, dropping us down into dangerous territory. Well, and they, there was already only a few of them that even knew how to use that vehicle to its 
capacity. It's like a Winnebago. I it can't drive something like that. Legit. Like I want one. Um, excuse me. I just sneezed my head off and I got to blow my nose. You guys hold on. So talk to them, say something smart. So yeah, we talked about policing, but we could also talk about affordability in Burlington. We've already touched base upon yes. how we have are in the midst of a housing crisis. Now, this housing crisis didn't just occur. Right. It didn't. It's not Moreau's fault. This has been a failure in leadership for now 30 years. Decades plus. in the making. Decades sure. in the making. But the truth is, you can't regulate your way out of a housing crisis that's caused by, by over regulations. regulations. Oh, that's you can good. Only get out by relaxing regulations responsibly and sensibly. That is such a smart way to put that, Christopher. It's so true. It's absolutely true. Uh, you mean regulations like. If it takes you more than 60 days to renovate your property, you have to remove it. You know, I feel this is strangely specific subject, but you know, yes. <laughs> yes, I've heard a Burlingtonian tell me, complain about how, yes, that if that your regulations booted you from um, being yeah. able to have your uh, room, in, your uh, your other apartment yeah. inspected. And this is now that we're done with court, I can talk about it all I want, which is why I've been talking about it all the time. But it literally is. It is it is the dumbest ordinance. It The or, the Burlington City Ordinance says that if you if your uh, unit is vacant for more than 60 days, you lose your special use permit. And so we have a triplex in a low density residential area, which is only allowed to have duplexes but you can get permission for triplexes and apartments from the city right so my mm -hmm. grandparents did that in 1963 when they built it well my mom and my aunt renovated renovated one of the units several years ago new floors new bathroom new kitchen new everything it was vacant for more than 60 days because that's any, how long it takes <laughs> anybody who's ever tried to renovate anything and now the city of burlington has had us in court for three years to make us remove an apartment. And we now are going to have to evict our tenants so that we can do the construction, which hopefully won't take more than 60 days. That's absolutely ludicrous. And I can tell you truly, like one of the things that we talk about when we talk about relaxing regulations is just that. Number one, relaxing the regulations that allow for multiple units on a property, not mm. just zoned for duplexes, triplex. And that also opens the door to auxiliary dwelling units. I'm sure you know what those are. Mm -hmm. Those yep, little tiny homes, whatever you'd like. Yep. We need to make it so that way you can build anywhere that it's feasible that you can build. It's called infill development. And it's the best way to get this taken care of. That will resolve your problem. It'll alleviate a lot of other problems going on out there where people have issues. Relaxing these zoning, we have hyper-specific zoning in the city that is strangling our housing market. Strangling I our mean, housing market. It's to the point where you can't, you can only use certain sized shingles on your building. If you have a slate roof, you have to put a slate roof back on. Are you kidding me? Why? Some of these homes that had that were built that had now have slate roofs when they were originally built, they didn't have slate roofs on them, they were like mulch and thatch that were on there. <laughs> but because somebody 80 years ago put, put a, slate a slate roof, roof on, on there, it. now you got to keep putting a slate roof on your house ludicrous so absolutely ludicrous so yeah we talk about those historic um zoning regulations that just pervert the reality of what you have to can be able to do with your home it's absolutely ludicrous. you can't change the facade you got to do the slate roofs you can't do this you can't do that it's ludicrous and people really don't understand that those 60 percent of burlington residents who rent really do not understand what we have to go through as landlords and this nonsense that we do. And I'm wondering if even like what I would love to see, Christopher, is for the city council ordinance committee or the city council to sit down and look at the the voluminous uh, volumes of ordinances and make sure that they're actually having the desired effect. That always about intended. reflecting and, and reevaluating to see if you are having the desired effect. You know, right now the city just started rolling out their um, their mandatory weatherization for rental properties. We were just speaking about this earlier today. That is a costly upgrade, costly. And when a landlord and a property owner observes that, without a doubt, we should have energy efficient units. Absolutely. But we have to keep in mind, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If it's a really expensive upgrade for the landlords to take on, we just increase the cost of living in that building. Those rents are going to be going up.
So when uh, we had the reappraisal and our property taxes went up 25%, that's money I now can't reinvest in my building that I can't reinvest to make it nicer and more comfortable for my tenants. Mm -hmm. uh, the more that they take and the more of these things, the longer we have to fight in court over stupid stuff, the less we have to provide good affordable housing. And most landlords in Burlington are like me, they're small and they only own a couple of properties. Yeah. And so it's just, you know, it's it's ludicrous that Moreau's administration took you to court over that because he's argued for um, augmenting the zoning to allow for triplexes for at least the last year. So why would he continue with your case? That's uh, there's and there's um, literally a, a well, uh, well, you know, mm, I've had my what I, do we I have, have here? <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have speculated, I've speculated. <laughs> Uh, but in all, but really, you know, it's crazy. And, you know, Brian asked, uh, why not fight these regulations as unconstitutional? I did. We went to court, made it all the way to the Supreme Court and argued. I mean, there's this is such a long story. There's going to be a documentary coming out about it soon. But the we went to all the way to the Supreme Court. And, and literally, I am not being hyperbolic. In the opinion, uh, the judge said, we recognize this ordinance is illegal that Burlington did not does not have the authority uh, because they never passed this. They never brought it to the legislature to be because the city has to put all ordinance changes. Yeah, charter changes have to go through. Yeah, through right. So uh, the Supreme Court judge literally said, "Yeah, we recognize this is this is an illegal ordinance, and too bad." So that is your legal system here in the state of Fantastic. Vermont, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, Oh, okay, so, so we hit on two campaign okay, issues. Okay, so the, taxes, oh, yeah. affordability. Well, uh, the police department and affordability, affordability and taxes. You actually called it. Uh, that, that is okay. the that is the big three right there. Uh, I I told Ward three residents and all of Burlingtonians uh, last August, and I continue to will continue every day to fight for holding the line on taxes just to make Burlington more affordable we need to work on our fiscal responsibility. Mm. We need to tighten our belts and trim some of our blow to government bureaucracy. We need to go through the city budget and make sure that we are line not line. not paying consultants, like legacy consultants annually and just keeping people on the payroll. We are wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars. If annually, not millions. If not millions. And that's what, I mean, how many times have we had to pay architects for stuff to redesign and redesign oh. and redesign at the tune of a million? You, yeah. it, hey, I, you know what? I've got a client that it's, is an architect. They need to get light. They need to register in Vermont because you could make a bajillion zillion dollars <laughs> off of the government who likes to have projects that they just redo and redo and redo. Yeah, there's, well, am I, am I, I don't want to delve going too, off on a tangent. Yeah, we're going off on a tangent because I, okay. I mean, yeah, um, <laughs> we all know that when it comes to construction and stuff like that, that shady money gets slipped around left and right. We're not making any accusations. No personal accusations levied at anybody, but you Just know the history. Saying. We can we can talk about EB5 and, mm. and the many, many problems our state has seen with people ripping it off the system. Isn't that true? Oh, oh, good Lord. Okay. We're, I'm right. getting all fired up. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so what, okay. So taxes, affordability. And, and our police department, those are my top three, but okay. you know, I always have two more in my back pocket and that's always, we can talk about um, infrastructure Yep. and trying to make sure that we are supporting our communities by having um, upgraded and maintained sidewalk infrastructure. Yes. It's to me, it's absolutely important. It's I, imperative that our community be linked down to the Church Street Marketplace and be able to get back and forth. If you yep. want to have a city where can, people can live, work, and play and not have to necessarily drive around in a car, then you need to have the sidewalks there to accommodate them. Sidewalks are a really big deal for me. They connect our city together, and they are there to help people with mobility challenges get around our city. They have every right to live their lives with dignity, the Americans with Disabilities Act guaranteed that well and i you know when you oh i just got goosebumps thinking about it when you shared your personal story about your dad oh, and yeah. his mobility issues and and there were things that you know i never considered uh people's ability to be able to get around right because i'm an able-bodied person so i just right. run around wherever yeah and so then when as my mom got older and and now she has some stability issues and 
And I thought, but my mom's able-bodied. She can walk around. What do, you, what do you mean, mom, that you are uncomfortable on uneven on s- sidewalks? And it, it was it was a surprise to yeah. me. Well, the truth is, once you hit 50, if you fall hard on a sidewalk, whether on ice or just on a fall day, you know, you run the risk of breaking something serious and maybe never being able to be physically active the same way again. Which is so scary. And you're, so your dad had MS, is that right? No, my father had a form of muscular dystrophy. It. It, it ate away at his body for 10, 12 years. Muscular dystrophy. It's really difficult. And so this is one of the things where I think it's so funny. People think Republicans are the party of no, right? That we don't care right. about people, yeah. that we're not compassionate. And my thing is, no, I want, infrastructure i want to build i want there to be sidewalks for my neighbors to get i'm gonna get emotional i want people to be able to get around and and have access to all of the things that they need and and i'm fine paying taxes for that i am fine putting in money all my libertarian friends are probably horrified at me right now saying i'm okay put paying taxes but but really i'm okay contributing for that it's just that I want my money to go to that, not all these pet projects right. and, you know, public right. art displays. And, you know, we're look, I'm an artist. My husband is an artist. We benefit from people who want to spend money on art. But if we spend money on art instead of sidewalks, like which one of those has more of an impact on the residents? Well, um, residents use uh, they use the sidewalks to get down to the marketplace and go to the corner stores. So they're putting tax dollars into our general fund and they're able to get out and exercise, which lowers our health care costs for everybody. Which we should all want. Which we should all want. Absolutely. I love it. So this is what to me, like, it, do me do me one thing before we go for tonight. I know sure. we said we were going to try to keep it tight, but let's see. Um, you said not to get too heady. Are we going to sing? We're going to. No, oh. no. <laughs> oh, don't get me started. You know, I will. Hmm. I'll sing all the time. No. Um, why make let's let's try to make the case. Uh, Brock says, thank you for supporting uh, Burlington Police Department. You got it, Brock. You bet. Um, we love BPD. I do uh, live two blocks from. For lived real. there for nine nine years now for real you yeah know i what? want them close by people asked me one time like i got arrested by burlington police more than once <laughs> <laughs> i shouldn't tell that story um but i was treated with way more compassion than i deserved let's just say that um but let's see if we can make the compassionate case for lower taxes Is that too heady to close with? See, this is what, you know, again, as conservatives, we get dogged out all the time for wanting to lower taxes and lower regulations. And people's comeback all the time is, oh, you, well, then that means you don't care about poor people and you don't care about old people and you don't care about, you know, whomever. You don't care about people. And I go, I, 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 that is so confusing to me. Because I think about it and I go, no, if you let me keep more of my money, then I get to take care of my mom instead right. of the government. Right. And to me, that's more compassionate. Absolutely is. So what do you, what would you say is like a good case or a good example of, of a compassionate reason to lower taxes? You worked for it. It's yours. You deserve to keep it because you know better. You know how to spend it better than the government does. And they're taking a large percentage of it and you're getting less in return. Take a look around. Yeah, that is actually a really good point. Your dollar is going not as far this year as it was last year. Wouldn't you like to have more of it back? And wouldn't you like your government to be a little bit more conservative with how they're spending it? Yeah, I'm not even saying cut all of the all of all of the um, services. Right. Uh, We're not talking about cutting services. We're just talking about trimming the fat. There's a lot of fat in our government. There is. I guarantee you, we could we could provide all the services we are today and probably cut the budget by at least 25 or 30 percent. I think that you can we could keep services and we can trim fat off the budget to the tune of like 13 to 17 percent for sure. No exaggeration, like Like, solidly. Like Like, that's a a conservative estimate. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So you think 13 to 17, like without question. 
I think for sure we could trim between 13 to 17 percent. That's wild. See, I'm saying like, I want to cut it all. I'm probably he's probably being a better we, estimator we, than I am. We wouldn't have to be able to refund all that. We just need to find the fat on there mm. to trim it down. And you would probably want to reallocate probably about three or four to other service, well, not services, but infrastructure upgrades, things yeah. that we we ignore year after year after year until it's broke. And then we have to call to the city for a bond. So yeah. we need to start like, budgeting for these things smartly. And if we trim our budget, the fat from the budget, we can start allocating for these things, these big ticket items that yeah. we actually need to get taken care of to be good stewards to our city and our resources we, and your money. Your mm. city councilors and your mayor are fiduciaries. It may not be in their job description, but uh, what it means to be a fiduciary is somebody who is responsible for your money. So that's why a financial advisor is a fiduciary. Whatever they do, they have to keep your best interest in mind. And so if I think our city council and our mayor took a, lo a little more responsibility for that and really understood, I mean, the fact that they're coming with budget increases after the reassessment and after our businesses and our and our jobs have been shut down for two years and you know i i i it is unconscionable to me yeah that they would come with their hat in hand and ask us for more money. oh yeah me too I, mean, I can't believe it we've got a another another attempt at a capital bond this time it's for 25 million we've got a tax rate increase that's on the ballot and uh, we got a TIF, fi um, TIF funding zone for great streets. Yep. I'm uncertain about even all these. More. I'm leaning That's hard even now. That's another bond. So they're asking, for all, my understanding is all of the bonds they're requesting is actually going to put us over our debt limit. And it's going to uh, tank our bond rating. Well, though, if we passed the $40 million bond uh, a few months ago, which fortunately failed, but if we had oh, passed that, it, there was a definite risk of us... Um, tanking our rating which, which was which is one of the reasons why people wanted to um why they voted that down because we have a school bond issue coming up that's going to be on the ballot by november our school needs to be rebuilt re rebuilt and you could probably talk a little bit about that since you are a candidate for a uh, school board but maybe yeah. that's the next episode yeah. or do you want to get that in today no i you know my thing is i'm just really disappointed that city officials uh, whether it's school commission or city council, um, really look at their taxpayers as if we can all provide them a blank check for their hopes and dreams. Um, the uh, the fact that here's 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 my pitch. We could do remediation on the school. So let's just keep in mind the budget and the bond and everything that the city is putting forward. None of that takes into consideration tearing down the old building and dealing with the pollutants and all that other stuff. So they want to spend all these millions and millions of dollars and they're not even going to deal with what it's going to mean to have this new built, this old building empty on the property and all of the problems that go along with that. So what they could have done, which is what any business would have done or any person would have done who has a budget and can do math is they say, okay. Burlington Tech Center is the worst part. We're going to remediate the Tech Center first. We're going to get all of that stuff dealt with. We're going to start putting in better air filtration stuff throughout the school. So we're going to displace the kids from the Tech Center and, you know, whatever, but we're going to do that. Now we put the kids in the Tech Center back. Now we take the uh, the second worst building and we remediate that and we displace those kids. And then we do it in an, in an order to get the worst out first uh and and take care of those things and now we still have our building we still have the structure we can make some of the accessibility changes and upgrades that we need to make to make it easier to get from building to building mm -hmm. which is a legitimate concern okay i am not blind to some of the reasons why people want renovations mm -hmm. um, but i think that we could do it building by building responsibly in a way that does not bankrupt the taxpayer Agreed. That's that's my pitch. Agreed. Uh, but instead, we go. Let's pay architects two million dollars <laughs> for feasibility and programming. And I know all these words because one of my clients is an architect. Um, but we're, they're doing all this schematic design, programming, and feasibility, literally to the tune of millions of dollars, before they've put a shovel in the ground mm -hmm. or anything. 
And none of it is done with consideration for what's actually feasible for Vermonters and Burlington residents to pay. And, and I think that's really a shame. It is a real shame. And, and, and the city of Burlington, the, our city council is, is no different. Um, now, in case people don't realize this, unlike many municipalities in Vermont, in Burlington, uh, our city council and our school board are separate entities. What they do not work together, they do not cooperate. They don't have the school board doesn't have to ask permission of the city council and vice versa. Right. So, um, so when Moreau, uh, when Mayor Weinberger takes two million dollars of the CARES Act to start a new city department that we then need to fund at two million plus dollars a year. Uh, I just have to wonder what he's thinking, you know, and yeah. then you're going to, you're going to create a department that was spoke with money that was supposed to be one time money that now Burlington residents have to fund to two, the tune of $2 million a year, instead of putting $2 million into our infrastructure, fixing our water treatment, fixing Memorial auditorium, et cetera, and so forth. Right. We have a lot that's been neglected in our city. A lot of our infrastructure has been neglected for a long, long time. You've touched base on Memorial Auditorium. I mean, that has been condemned. And we are essentially trying to pump in about a million dollars as part of that capital bond. Um, if if they even just to make sure that it doesn't it, collapse, which is crazy to me. So we're practically just setting it on fire. I don't know why we don't just sell it to some private developer who can turn that. People into are real usable. nostalgic about it. You know, they love the Memorial Auditorium. I mean, I get it, but OK, so I'm going right. to show plug this. Uh, I'm going to okay. tell our audience that please, please visit uh, www.felkerforward3.com. Uh, like, follow, volunteer, and donate if you can. Um, yeah. You know how this works. Uh, money is is and donations are how we are able to share our messaging with other voters via uh, targeted Facebook ads or whether it's a, a direct mailer. And direct mailers, I remember when I looked it up for Ward 4, it was going to cost me like four grand just for my Ooh, ward. You know what? I've got really good news from you because I had a wonderful conversation with the Wendy Wilton this <gasps> afternoon, and she tipped me off about how um, their candidates up in Milton figured out a strategy where you um, print the cards and then you take them to the USPS and the, for like 4,800 mailers. It's about thirteen hundred dollars. What? I know, right? Doesn't make you want to call her right now, but okay. we don't have time. Okay, we're gonna. Call, so we're gonna we'll work Wendy on after. that. We'll we'll talk to Wendy after. Okay. I told her that I was gonna share it with you too. I was like, I'm gonna share this with Erica. Okay. Um, and what else we got? Well, yeah. So we have uh, the Christopher Iron Felker for Ward Three campaign on okay. YouTube, which has offers lots of videos about talking about many different more. issues in Burlington. How, why am I a Republican? Sidewalk infrastructures. City place, if you want to oh hear my about God, my opinions the on the, in the pit. ground. Oh um, my God, yes. And thoughts on Airbnb. You know, uh, it's a oh, real shame. It's a real shame that this city council is attempting to pin their failures on and scapegoat Airbnbs. Airbnbs make up like 1.3% of our rentals, and they yeah. put so much money into our general funds every year. That's right. There's about 300 short term rentals out of 20,000, 17,000, something like that. Ridiculous. So, really, not very many. We also have Chris Aaron Felker uh, for City Council uh, Facebook page. On so, Facebook. please like, follow, and, 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 and be share. part of the conversation. Yeah. And you guys, we're going to have even more videos posted um that what's that stop sharing is that what i do oh yeah if you is want, that to. What I want to click sure okay, sure there oh go. look at you there now we are be my producer yeah. um so we're gonna have even more Computer? videos <laughs> 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 i love you i love oh you too God. you're the best <laughs> that was uh, if, if, whoever doesn't know that is a Star Trek reference. <laughs> yes, yeah, Star Trek um, 4. Yes, that is from one of the movies. Yep. You, okay, you are officially my second favorite person behind my husband. Love it. Okay. Oh my, I'm seriously geeking out right now. Okay. I don't even remember what I was saying. I was like, that distracted me. I don't so know. <laughs> um, okay. Well, um, Okay, so we're going to have even more videos up in the next yeah. few weeks. So, um, you know, every like and share that you guys provide is going to make a huge difference for Christopher's campaign. Uh, donate what you can. Click on the link. 
uh, send them a couple bucks. It'll help. It'll go a really long way. And if you are not in Burlington, right, like say you're a resident of, of Hardwick or Colchester or Bennington or wherever you are in the world right now, and you're thinking to yourself, um, why would I why would I contribute to a campaign in Burlington, Vermont, where all those crazy people live? And th what what happens in Bur like the, the saying goes, as goes Burlington, so goes the state of Vermont. And so a lot of these um, initiatives that we see that everybody thinks are wild and really kind of outrageous, they start here and then they sort of disseminate out to our state legislature because so many of them are from Burlington. Yes. Uh, we're so overrepresented in the state legislature from Chittenden County. Just from population wise, because of the census, we, we our numbers have grown and um, other areas of Vermont have remained. Um... And so, so you can actually make a difference. Yeah, you absolutely. can actually help get someone elected to city council in Burlington to help stop the bleeding uh, restore some sanity, restore some stability to our to our council and to our regulatory environment. That's what we really need. It's absolutely that we is need, really what we, we need. We need to bring a conservative voice to city council so we can demonstrate that that we can work together to build a better Burlington together. Uh, I love it. Michael Allen said, heard, heard Chris on the radio this morning. Very encouraging. Yes. You Thank you, go. Michael. That's fantastic. I'm glad you listened. Yeah, we were on the Kurt Wright radio show this morning and. Um, it was it was a great it was a great conversation with Kurt and the callers were just absolutely fantastic. Nice. You know, was, good good questions. You got a lot out of it. Good questions. There was a Ward three caller who called in said that they were proud to vote for me last time. Pro, you know, got a little caught, got a little choked up for a second. You know, it's just, it's fantastic. I running for office isn't something I ever thought I was going to do before, but since doing it, um, I love getting to know my neighbors. I love the fact that people still pull their cars over to tell me that they like what I'm saying. They like the way I'm saying it. And, you know, it means something when when the call comes asking you to pick up the mantle and lead. Yep. That's what I chose to do. And that's <laughs> what we you know, we everyone recognized right away. As soon as you started coming to meetings and participating, everybody was like, who's this guy? Who's this guy in the suit? You see, and he's really articulate and thoughtful and it's it's really clear that this is not just about um running for office or or having a hobby it's clear right. that you really care and and i see how honored you are in oh, yeah. when people trust you as a candidate and yeah. and that that humility that you carry is so cool thank and you much appreciate i really appreciate that you know it's it is an honor to um, to have the trust of of the Republican Party and the and the trust of so many people in our community, uh, and to have to be able to articulate conservative principles in a respectful way, uh, to just provide balance and be part of the conversation. You know, it's it's all of us working together. Oh, I love it. That's... We all play a part. You know, we really do. We all play a part in this community. That's the whole point of community. So we need to get involved. Yes. And I encourage you all to get involved. Yes. And you know what? I, to that end. Um, Olivia Taylor is, uh, is a candidate in, in ward seven. So she is, uh, oh, running yeah. in the new North end. She, uh, she seems to be a progressive, although uh, she got the progressive nomination, she's progressive. uh, but, I'm but gonna, she's running as an independent though, isn't she? She is. Okay. And, and you know what? I'm going to have her on the show in a couple weeks. Oh, great. You know, I wasn't sure I was going to, but she gave a pitch yesterday at the NPA talking about tax credits for landlords who choose long-term rentals. And it was really interesting to hear a progressive really coming up with some practical solutions to work with people and to try to make it a win-win scenario. And I think that's what it takes is for all of us to sit down. We all come from different backgrounds. We have different belief systems. Um, our foundation is different, right? Like my foundation, anybody who knows me is that uh, you know, people are trash and the government cannot be trusted. That is why I wrote a book called Reasons to Trust the Government. And it's blank. OK, so. Um, so but if we if we can demonstrate what it looks like to to come to the table and say, you know, I don't know everything, but I'm willing to speak with you and I'm willing to negotiate with you and see what that looks like and really work together. I think that is the best thing that we can ask for out of our elected officials. 
you know, they're not always going to make the best decisions. They're not always going to be perfect. But if we can recognize that they're trying and that they want what's best for uh, Burlingtonians, then that's all we can really ask for. Absolutely. Amen. Do you want to give one final pitch to our viewers before you head out? Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, it was a pleasure being here with Erica. Uh, I, I encourage you all. Uh, we do have social media. I have a Facebook page. You could look that up. It's my name. Uh, we've got the YouTube page if you want to look into more about where we stand on the issues. And we'll be adding more videos to that in the future. But you can like and follow and sign up to follow along on, on, on my website. And that's www.felker for Ward 3, the number 3. Dot com. com. And I like it. It actually, when it's all spelled out, it also says Felker forward. Yeah, it does. Which I like. It's pretty rad. Because it's it? like it's like a double meaning yeah. there. Felker forward. Yeah. Forward. Moving us forward. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So I'm going to close this out for the evening. Uh, oh, Michael says I'm a resident of Ward 5. But I really, but it really lifted my spirits hearing an articulate, optimistic, level-headed conservative running to save Burlington. Michael, that thank you so much. If you'd like to get coffee, please inbox me. I'd love to hear uh, your opinions <laughs> on how we can uh, work together to build a better Burlington. Oh, oh, somebody made a comment. Oh, uh, Wayne, you're going to have to send me a private message and tell me what I need to know. Um, apparently, I might, I might need some more information. We'll see. Uh, but you guys, we're going to close out um, at per usual. Um, we're going to close out. Uh, with our ridiculous commercial, uh, Benjamin and I, my husband and I's uh, book, a commercial for our book, it is $9.99 on Amazon.com. It is a beautiful coffee table book, and it is sure to get a conversation started with your friends and neighbors that come over to visit. So uh, so I'm going to close out with a commercial because, you know, I just like to be ri as ridiculous as possible. So, uh, so here we go. I should have brought my generally irritable cup. Oh, we could. It's oh, so cold out. I could have cracked just in my hand. You know what I mean? Have. Like it's it freezing out have. there, Burlington. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> have a great night. This book will give you wings. What kind of wings? Not like Icarus wings, like eagle wings. Yeah. What about dragons? You'll have dragon's blood. You'll be able to breathe fire. Fire like the ultra eagle Drago guard. This book will make you smarter. Yes. I'm not just talking honorable smart. I'm talking Nikola Tesla, Tesla smart. smart. You'll be so good looking, Brad Pitt will be jealous. Do you want to make money? How much money? Elon Musk money. That's a lot of money. People will think you're Elon Musk, but you're not Elon Musk. But they'll think you're Elon, Elon Musk because you pay taxes like Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. And you have to argue with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren because she thinks you're Elon Musk. Musk. Do you want freedom? How much freedom? All the freedom. Yeah. One to America. How much freedom do you want? America. D D Double America. Yeah. yeah.